Ever wondered, how long do motorcycle batteries last? Here, batteries refer to equipment made up of a cell or more and can make direct current by changing chemical energy to electrical energy. The word battery was first coined in the year 1748 by Ben Franklin. Ben Franklin might have coined the words, but it was Alessandro Volta, an Italian physicist who produced the first and working battery in the year 1800. Volta's named after Alessandro Volta. Thirty years later, gravity battery had turned to be one of the most trusted ways of making electric power. They were used mostly to supply power to the earliest telegraph networks in those days. Those gravity batteries are what made way for the lead and acid batteries that are available today. The commonest type of batteries for motorcycles are acid or lead flooded batteries. These originated from seminal gravity batteries. Wet batteries or flooded cells are actually a group of singular cells. Each of the cells produces 2.12 to 2.2 current volts this is largely dependent on the design of the battery. The singular cells are placed together in one container. So, how long do motorcycle batteries last? The answer to these questions is actually dependent on so many factors. On average, manufacturers of motorcycle batteries agree that batteries should last for four years. But how many of us have used the same battery for more than two years? It all boils down to some factors and here they are. 1. Quality and type of battery. There are two main types of motorcycle battery. The wet cells and the sealed batteries, also known as the valve regulated lead acid batteries VRLA. The VRLA is also divided into two, gel battery and absorbent glass mat AGM. AGM and gel batteries have a lot in common with the wet cell yet there are standout differences. The VRLA is made on gas recombinant technology but the wet cell is not. When a wet cell is charging, the chemical process which takes place splits water into the two parts that make up water, hydrogen, and oxygen. Furthermore, both gases cause pressure in the car battery which is then expelled to the air. What this means is water, in the form of hydrogen, and oxygen is lost, leaving only the acid. This means distilled water would have to be added to the battery periodically. However, sealed batteries or VRLAs used lead calcium combination. This is different from lead plate sponges and lead dioxide that is typical of normal batteries. What this entails is that when the VRLA is charging, hydrogen is not produced. Oxygen forms anyway but it is not sent to the atmosphere. The technology used in making the battery allows it to join active ingredients in the car battery and form water again. So, this means that there is no need for you to top up water. The sealed batteries are not cheap, to put it mildly. In fact, they usually cost double the amount of a wet cell. But they are better than the wet cell. So, if your battery is a sealed one, VRLA, it would last longer than the normal wet cell. The AGM is the commonest type of sealed battery. It can hold charges for a longer period of time. They also have the ability to resist freezing. This is one reason why many riders like them. There is of course a disadvantage to AGMs. They need a strong charging system. The system has to send out a minimum of 14 volts. This means that older motorcycles with less power may not work well with the AGM. The gel batteries are not really used that much in motorcycles. They do not make use of liquid electrolyte. The manufacturer fills it with a combination of water, sulfuric acid, and silica. The silica looks like toothpaste and it is very acidic. Asides these, gel batteries are like wet cells. One fine thing about the gel cells is that they can hold charges for an exceptionally long time. They can also go low and be recharged, yet they will not lose many capacities. Asides this, they are not as good as either wet cell or AGM. 2. The ratings on the battery. The information on the battery may be much, but there are two that you need to pay attention to. They are the ampere hour rating and cold cranking amperage. The rating tells how long a battery would last for a particular constant discharge rate. When using smaller motorcycle batteries, this average is mostly checked over a period of 10 hours at one-tenth of the amp rating of the battery. Here is an example, if the battery has an amp rating of 14 hours, it means that for every 10 hours, the battery will lose 1.4 amperes. So, this means that a higher rating on a particular battery size means better performance and longevity. Cold cranking amp measures how much amperage the battery can send out when the weather is 0 degrees Fahrenheit for half a minute. 
This is without going under 7.2 volts. This is majorly what is used to access the performance of a low-aided battery in cold temperatures. This simply means that if your bike has a higher CCA, it will start with ease on cold days. Hence, there is less risk of the battery going dead and needing external charge. 3. Weather Condition Another factor that determines how long the battery will last is the prevalent weather condition. If you have been following, you would notice that the battery has a hard time working fine in cold times. If you have a bike you would have noticed this too. The normal temperature is okay for the battery of the motorcycle. It is advisable that the motorcycle is stored in a heated garage, so the battery will be maintained. If this does not happen, the battery will grow cold. And for every time a battery needs external charging, the longevity of the battery is reduced. 4. How do you use the battery? Another factor that affects how long the battery will last is the usage of the battery. How long do you use the battery? Unlike some other equipment that wears with usage, it does seem that the battery is even preserved by usage. A battery that is not in constant use will die. Charging the battery of the motorcycle, with the motorcycle, is one of the best ways to ensure longevity. So, it is vital that the battery is charged by actually using the battery. It can also be done by using an external charger. Battery tender can be used to charge the battery. But the best way to charge the battery is by riding the motorbike. Tips on motorcycle battery maintenance. 1. Keep the battery clean. It is important that you keep the battery clean at all times. Dirt on the battery could shorten the terminals of the battery and make the battery drain in just few hours. You can use a wet rag to wipe the battery case. The rag can be soaked in a water pint that is soaked with three spoons of soda. This is very vital especially if you ply dusty terrains often. A thorough cleaning will help preserve the charge on the battery. 2. Grease the terminals. You can coat the terminal with grease or Vaseline. This will help secure the terminals against elements. 3. Top up distilled water if the battery that your motorbike uses is a wet cell. You have to keep tabs on the electrolyte and top up when it is low. 4. Don't let your batter discharge completely. If the motorcycle is not flying around every day, you have to do something, so it does not discharge totally. You have to plug the battery into a tender. Your battery will serve you better and live longer if it is near a full charge as much as possible. If you've enjoyed this video, click the subscribe button below and hit the notification bell so you'll know once we post a new video. Also, drop a comment below so we can know your thoughts. Finally, don't forget to check the description below for more details and visit our site www.zimmotorbike.com for more awesome motorbike content like this.